And hello, everyone. Welcome to The Real Estate Show on KCMX News Media 880. Pete Belcaster and Joe Breath, The Real Estate Guys, with you today. And thanks for joining us on KCMX. We have a terrific show today, The Market. What in the world is going on in the market here in mid-August? And we've got two terrific John L. Scott agents today to share their stories and information with us as we head into, I guess it used to the dog days of summer. Here it is, even though it's smoky all over, uh, but there's a lot of activity going on. First of all, fellas, uh, welcome to the show. Nice to, nice to have you here. Good to be yeah, here, Pete. Yeah. Thanks for having me back, Pete. Well, Trevor's been on before uh, with us. Uh, Craig's been on before as well. It's great to visit with you, fellas, and talk a little bit about the market. Okay, Trevor, you're, you know, Trevor, of course, in the Medford office. It's Craig based out of Ashland. And so, uh, I mean, I was good. We talked about sales. My goodness, uh, July was almost as big for John L. Scott as it was the as June was was the biggest yeah. month ever. Yeah. What's going on, Trevor? Well, in June, uh, John L. Scott, uh, Medford Ashland, we sold combined total of about $93 million. Yeah. And, uh, July wasn't far behind, coming in at $88 million. So what's going on? Tell, t- tell us your impression here of this summer, what it's been like for, for you as an agent, buying, selling. Tell us what's going on. Busy, busy. Uh, you know, there's interest rates are creeping up. Uh, but something that's happening that's a little bit different this year, uh, this summer, is that there's a little more inventory out there. Yeah. Right. Inventory is up across all categories. Let me, see, let me check here. I was going to say in Jackson County, we haven't had a thousand member. Uh, a thousand homes in the market I just for, him, for a long time. I just want him to say it again. Inventory is what? It's creeping up. <laughs> That's a good news. I mean, it's well, very okay. good news for the market. Well, it depends what it, it de- You're I, right, but it depends what it is. I mean, if it's all going to be luxury homes that we're seeing, then buyers, it is really going to do that. I, I, well, buyers there was, that are looking hard. There were some months uh, last year where the inventory for 250000 and less was less than a month. Yeah. And you were pretty yeah. much guaranteed at 250000 and less uh, of having a bidding war. Yep. Yeah. Absolutely. All right. Well, you are right. There are over 1,100 in the latest SOMLS stats that came out this last week. So these are pretty up to date here. We had over 1,133 homes in the market in Jackson County, which was up 6% from a year ago. That's yeah. not really a whole lot. In Josephine County, they're up 28%, but their sales are down. So it, it makes you, you try to find patterns in this stuff. <laughs> I haven't been able to do that yet. Right? All right, go. I'm happy with the six percent. Uh, that inventory's <laughs> up. That that really is. I'm happy the yeah. the direction that we're trending. Yep. You think so? Okay, yep. Craig Bozinski, what about you? What's happening in your world? Well, I think you mentioned that uh, the smoke, and certainly that has affected businesses. Any outdoor activity, the Brit Festival, the um, boats down the Rogue River, and certainly in Ashland, uh, the Shakespeare Outdoor Theater has had to be closed a few times cancellations of hotels and restaurants uh, sales are down however that has not affected in any way the real estate market it's it's still as Joe was mentioning a robust Bay Area uh, people are still moving here and I think the at least the three transactions that I had recently show the diversity of what's actually happening one of them was a, a luxury condo luxury second condo. second okay. home for a Bay Area, San Francisco mm-hmm. person. Second home, okay, we've certainly seen those before. Yeah. Okay. The second group of people who are buying are people who already live here. They might be, they don't necessarily have to be older, but they are they want a single story. So they're getting out of their two-story homes, transitioning. transitioning to a single story. And then the third group that I'm working with are investors. The market is very really? strong mm-hmm. for rentals, mm-hmm. and they're paying Great cash time. in both Medford and Ashland. Uh, for rental. So I'm seeing it across the line. Our market is is just really doing really well. Well, it certainly I have, do you think do you fellas think that we've peaked? I mean, I look at you know, these uh, all the statistical information that comes out in, in uh, Jim Remley, who's our managing broker, you know, is so good at kind of dissecting it and what's under this peel those layers back. He always says, you know, and see what you find. Uh, I think year over year for Jackson County as a whole, and there's many segments within Jackson County, I think we've been seeing roughly 10% a year in appreciation in the last mm-hmm, five right, years. Right. Um, so I think that a leveling off, a, a, a slight cooling mm-hmm. down, so to speak, is, is actually a healthy thing. I think might, so, might be yeah. a normalizing, you might even call it, because standard, well, about 5% a year is a great return on your in, in, well, investment in real estate and we've been double digits you know we've been twice that for for a number of years now i was just looking josephine county had an 11 percent increase mm-hmm. uh, in in this last segment from a year ago jackson county uh, 6.8 percent overall 
those are those are healthy. Yeah, yeah. There's just a lot. There's a lot going on. So obviously across the board there. The one area that really amazes me the differences is in new construction. Tell me what you're seeing there, Trevor, because you're involved with that a lot. You you develop things. Uh, uh, so tell me what you're seeing new construction wise. You know, there it, it's not flying off the shelves like it was. Yeah. Okay. Um, that's, that's that's my okay. And, and I think that just the fact that there's more inventory in in the form of existing homes. You know, if those existing homes are priced right, they're they're pretty tough competition for new construction that you're going to be paying a premium for. Mm-hmm. But it's really changed. Listen to these stats here. There were 68 new construction homes sold in the three-month period in Jackson County. 68. That's a bunch. A year ago, it was 115. That's a significant mm-hmm. decline. And I don't know what's going on. Or And we got to get Brad Bennington back from the Home Builders yep. Association because I don't know what's going on in Josephine County. But there's simply no new construction going on. There was only four in three months new homes sold in all of Josephine County. That's crazy. Yeah. You talk about a housing crisis looming is right there. There's nothing new coming on the market and the demand there just like it is here. They have subdivisions in the works in Grants Pass, but we're talking still at the level of just scraping out the streets and laying curbs. And They're not even close. They're in the works, but a long ways down the road before they'll be on the market. Well, in, in, the, in, in just those four, what's happening in Josephine County is that the prices for those are going way up over 20% increase from a year ago. So what's there is really going fast and going for higher prices. What's not enough of it? Same thing we see in Ashland all the time, Craig. I mean, we just don't see much new construction. In fact, there were none. uh, I'm sorry, there were four uh, there as well. And I bet all of them were in town, probably in and around, you know, infilling somewhere or flag lots. Well, Ashland has, you know, a small urban growth boundary, and that's made for a very desirable uh, lifestyle in Ashland, there's not a, a sprawl, but there's not much room to there's build. No room. We're, we're built into the side of a mountain, and yeah. so there's nowhere really to, to, to build. So there's just a very few lots. So that's really affecting cons- uh, new construction, at least in Ashland. Yeah. I'm curious with all the fires, because Joe goes to attends a lot of planning commission meetings, commissioner meetings all over. You know, as we, we, we built, you know, we've had these terrible fires around us. We've built into the interface of the forest as well. Yeah. We are no different than Redding, Santa Rosa, all those other places, are we? I mean, we, we're we, not. We, we, and we're continue to build into the forest interface. What's changed is that the fire and the nature and the severity of those fires is like nothing we've ever seen in, in our life. We used to no. cover the forest fires yeah. in the newsroom for years, and they, nothing like what we see these days. They're, they're just a huge whole other level of uh, danger and uh, things that you could not have foreseen, I don't think, 30 years ago, 20 years ago, when some of those subdivisions were built. There were such beautiful places right on the Sacramento River that you could well, never no, have foreseen. Forget, look look, look I mean, at it here. I, I know. I forget, forget Sacramento River. They, they can't even right. go over Gleese yeah. Road. Hornbrook, and uh, you you see know. how fast they burn through there? It could so, happen here. So that's the problem, and I think as we continue yeah. to build, and but governments have got to, you know, we just can't, the further deep, deeper you go, the more tragedy you're going to have. And we're seeing it here for the first time around us. And it's just tragic to watch. And people need to be aware of Defensible that. Defensible spaces. Buy. I don't know if people you talk to, but they're moving here. This has got to affect some people. Some people, I don't want to be here anymore. I can tell you my household is affected. My father-in-law will be moving in with us. His house just outside of Reading has burned down. Wow. Really? Okay. Right. Oh, my goodness. Right. So you feel, you felt that firsthand. Right, yeah. Um, the, the family ranch been in the family since the uh-huh. mid-'70s. Uh, just three miles from Whiskey Town Lake, it oh, kind of uh, one oh. of the few residences that close to the lake. Uh, it was a main house and five cabins, no. all burned, all gone, all gone, all gone. Oh, Trevor, I did. I didn't it's, know it's that. A, it's a, a, it's a big family tragedy, and the, the sad thing is, is because it was more than five miles from the nearest fire station, they weren't able to get insurance on it. They were not able even to have insurance on it. Oh, so goodness. for buyers and, looking at uh, rural property, that's something to, to and, consider. And I was just going to say, enough. I've read some things regarding fire insurance. Yeah. There was a thing even on, within our agents that all of a sudden people moving into forest inter- interfaces and in some of these rural properties, are there's no fire insurance now, right? I mean, this is a big problem. Uh, it is. It is. And um, witnessing it firsthand, experiencing it firsthand. Boy, that's tough. That's a... That's I didn't, didn't know that. That's that's pretty darn. Not, that's pretty tragic. But one of the other things in terms of the market goes, we we know that it's happening, and uh, rural properties are also taking a hit. Uh, when you go back three years ago, when we, we first when when the marijuana laws first were were introduced, we were in the gold rush. Yes. How many the green times? rush? The, the green, green rush. The, the green gold rush because it was it was insane. I mean, people were 
going to make millions and millions we're of come dollars. Up here and grow money. They're going to grow green money. Remember that? Yep. Well, well the marijuana whole industry, those prices have plummeted, and people are getting out of the industry altogether, and so that's going to affect. Uh, and it's affected so. the market. In the rural properties, okay? I mean, this is what we're talking about. Rural properties, the last three months, Jackson County had a 10% decline. In the, and, the, and, and no increase in value on 153 properties sold from a year ago. That tells you something there. In Josephine County, they actually had a decline. They had a 20% drop in rural sales and a 3% drop in rural values. That's probably says it all, doesn't it, for what we're seeing? There, there's a lot of these growers that jumped in three years ago uh, that just are being pushed out because the, the price, the demand for marijuana has just gone down. And, and so a lot of these properties are, uh, it was kind of some shady financing, some yeah. owner carry financing with a lot of cash down. And now these growers, uh, they can't. Can't follow up with no, the contract no. uh, that they've made with the owners and are having to bell. And so a lot of these people who had these these rural properties are, are now taking them back. Um, I guess there's some banks taking them back. It's trying to sell them. The, the one thing you, you have to remember, okay. though, is that you have to remove all of the marijuana related infrastructure, infrastructure. all the marijuana infrastructure. You got to get rid of it. Yeah. It's got to go because the banks and the title companies, nobody will touch those properties. Yeah, we, no. I, do, you, do you, okay. Do you three think we're going to see this continue decline oh, yeah. here for a little bit longer? Yeah, they I, I really do. For a lot of those properties. I do. And I was a little hopeful because now it seemed like here in the Valley, uh, that there was a lot of people jumping onto the hemp bandwagon. Mm -hmm. But now I think that even that's kind of the same thing. I think yeah. too many people have jumped on that Supply bandwagon. And, and uh, people were hoping that prices when they harvest were going to be for hemp, raw hemp or mm -hmm. whole hemp, uh, was going to be like $95 a pound. Now I'm hearing that people are really expecting there's so much inventory out there, it's going to be closer to... Forty-five dollars a pound, and they haven't made that. That, that organic hemp industry. The interest it one, has one, not one, blossomed yet. One thing we understand in the real estate industry is supply and demand, and the marijuana industry has so much more supply than the demand is far but exceeds I, anything. I've, I've met, I've met, and it's hard to see that coming. But I feel sorry for the folks that have laid out all that money. Well, there's a lot of people that are pretty stuck. darn happy about it. The neighbors of some of these places I've <laughs> yeah, talked to okay. are thrilled. That's, uh, You're that's absolutely a right. silver lining. Because absolutely right. they're getting rid of these people, yeah. some of yeah. these people who did all sorts of strange things. You know, and their some of quality of life. So it really it comes full circle yeah. with this. But we're seeing what we're at the bottom line, the rural properties may be right now the best the best value. Is someone nah, saying that nah, right yeah. now? Gotta wait for him to bottom out. No, well, there's no value raising. I mean, everything else is rising. <laughs> it's not. They're going down. Yeah, Pete. They are going down. It's going down. I, I think it's a good time to buy a rural property. If might, that's what you're wanting. It wondering. might be. Right. It might just be right now to do that. I want to wait another know. year. I want to have this conversation in a year. <laughs> more ready to go. Well, look how far we've come up. Way up here. Now we're way down here. I mean, it just goes like this. Uh, there's no reamer rising, uh, ream, <laughs> no theme to it, but except that it's out there and it's real. And as buyers and sellers, you have to be realistic in what the market is doing, especially in these rural properties. We got a break coming up. We're with Trevor Boucher and Craig Blazinski here on the Real Estate Show. We're going to take a break. We're going to come back, continue. Don't you dare go away. Don't forget, you can check out any of our past shows at realestateshoworegon.com. And we are coming right back right after this. And welcome back to the Real Estate Show on KCMX News Media 880. Pete Belcaster and Joe Brent, the Real Estate Guys, with you. And thanks for joining us today in our mid August show. Next week, uh, Rogue Valley Association of Realtors Education Program continues. Two weeks from today, Sheriff Nate Sickler will be joining us. In three weeks, we've got the Senate candidates. Uh, Jessica Gomez uh, is confirmed, and hopefully Jeff Golden will be joining us talking about real estate issues, land use issues that uh, we face in Salem. And let's face it, we always you know, again, have issues. Can it just be real estate issues? or Because there's a few other items happening in Salem I could... No. Okay. You just be quiet. We're talking... <laughs> we don't Land have that. Use. We don't have that much time. <laughs> what's in the what's show happening anyway in Salem, Joe? All that. There's yeah, a no. few things I'd like to tweak or, no. or just modify. We don't let him. Bit. We don't let him do that. <laughs> anyway, uh, Craig and Trevor here, both John L. Scott agents as well. So again, thanks guys for being here. It, you know, I don't know the. Uh, when you do this long enough, it, it seems like you know it. Nothing never stays the same, and you meet. What's interesting to me about real estate is that you meet some fascinating people who have all sorts of different objectives. <laughs> It's, it's a wonderful it? industry. You get to meet all kinds of interesting people and be of service to them and help them through whatever situation they are in their life. If they're you know, first-time home buyers, first yeah. house, and growing family, or people are downsizing, um, all, all kinds of... It, 
situations it, it, that you it, get to be of service. Everything you can imagine. You, we, we should be writing books, you know, about <laughs> about all of this. I know Craig. When I first when I first met Craig, he 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 was a door to door guy. And you think about you know door to door salesmen selling you know a fuller brushes remember those kind of things you would see, you were th- you 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 were amazing when I first met you. You so you must have met some fascinating people oh, over time. I'm going to write a book. The the real Ashland is going to be called. You know it's so great. I came here in 2001, and I was a teacher, and my wife were teachers, and there were no teaching jobs in Ashland. We had a declining enrollment. Uh, places like That's Eagle, right. That's Eagle right. Point and those places that were hiring, they said, you know, with your years of experience and master's degree, you, you know, we could hire two teachers for you. So I went into real estate. And what happened the very first week on the job? 9-11 in New oh, York. Wow. Re- really? Oh, I didn't know and, that. Okay. And it was, you know, nobody was coming into the office. Nobody was calling. And I went to the owner of Remax and I met with him. I said, you know, I didn't make much money as a teacher, but I had a steady income. I'm going to go. I have two small children. And he said, well, you got to use your sphere of influence. I said, yeah, I have I no sphere of influence. I'm that. new to Ashland, yeah. new to real estate. And so I said, I'm just going to go out there and, and meet people. They're not coming in. And he goes, what are you going to throw your body in front of a car? They're going. I said, well, they, well maybe, they, maybe have California, do that. If they have California plates. I would yeah. consider. Yeah. So I just said, I'm just going to go door to door and talk to people. And he said, well, that's like you said, it's the, that's something out of the 1950s. Really? Really? Yeah. And so he said, you're an independent contractor. You can do what you want, but it's not going to work. And when he said oh, that, ooh, that ooh. put the fire underneath me. Yeah, yeah. Those are fighting yeah. words, aren't they? So yeah. I had I had a goal. I had 5,000 pads made with my name on it, my picture, my business number. And I went door to door, starting in the railroad district in Ashland. And I went down that street, and I stopped at the very last house on the corner, and that tells me where I left off. And a woman came to the door, and she says, you know, I do want to sell my house, but everybody tells me to work with, you know, the top. So-and-so. The top, Uh so-and-so. So-and-so. And (laughs) And so I said, great, I'll find a buyer for your place. And so she said, would you like to see my place? And I said, absolutely. So we walked through the house. We sat on the front porch for a while, and she said, you know, I'm going to list this house today. I said, well, give that agent a call, and I'll find a buyer. She goes, no, I'm going to list it with you. I'm, wow. with you. And I'm yeah. like, what? Oh, 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 sure, and why is that? And she says, she, did that. she said, my mantra and my philosophy is when opportunity knocks, you take it. You wow. were knocking. She wasn't. Uh-huh. Right. It, so I don't know this woman, but it looks like you have a good work ethic. I'll give you a shot. Yeah. And that was my very first listing. It, it, good it's, for you. Yeah, that, that's yeah. really interesting. That's the first. That's the first one. You, now you, you're different, Trevor. You and you and your lovely bride do this together, right? I mean, to, we do. Yeah. Right. And uh, uh, you've you've seen obviously a lot of things. Ashland's one market, totally different right. than what you see a lot of times well, in the we, Medford. We also work in the Ashland market yeah. as well. Um, had the opportunity to help some people there, uh, both buy and sell. But yeah, it's one of the things that we love about this business is helping people, like I had mentioned. And uh, we had some clients uh, that we just recently helped them buy a house, and uh, they were doing some remodeling to the kitchen and uh, had invited us over for wine and hors d'oeuvres. They wanted to show us what they had done as far, so far as far as the remodel. And, um, you know, so there we are in the kitchen having some cheese and some wine and, uh, the lady, she starts talking. She's like, you know, there's some funny things going on in this house. I'm like, really? Like what? She's like, well, like the the doors slam. And uh, so we kind of got nervous about that. And so we got cameras and we're catching images of strange mist and stuff. And so just for the heck of it, I get on my first American title app and I uh, uh-huh. look on who owned the house previously and uh, find his name. And then I Google his name. And sure enough, it, it says on the article that I found in the obituary that he passed away at his residence in the house oh, okay. where we were standing. Paranormal <laughs> activity in the house. So that that's it's yes. true. Okay. Yeah. Well, yeah. And then in addition to that is on that subject. I mean, we've I don't know many realtors that haven't been showing property with clients and gone and shown a number of properties. And, and once in a while, you come across one property where your client or maybe even yourself will feel you know there's just something not right with this house mm-hmm. i just don't want to be here mm-hmm. so paranormal activity have you ever seen any of that i mean i, oh, I i've I, heard of i've heard of i mean, I've people walk into places and get just freak out and say, i don't i don't like it in here and turn around and leave and oh. fr- the first time that happened you think well that's oh. kind of crazy but then after a while it's true i mean i think it's, there's something there no when uh donna and i first moved here we were going to get a rental to see if we where we wanted to live and and uh, we were looking at a, a 1890 home or and um, 
we heard this rustling of paper upstairs and the the property manager guy just walked out the door and and he goes i'm leaving i go where are you going and he said that is the third time i have heard a noise from that back room Mm -hmm. so ironically about 10 years later i that house was for sale and i showed it to a couple from san francisco and same thing we were downstairs and the wife just runs by me and runs into the car i says your wife feeling okay so i went out to the car i said are you okay and she goes I was in a haunted house one time in San Francisco. That noise in that back room is the noise I heard. So that same room that we heard 10 years earlier as a rental heard the same noise. I've been with uh, uh, clients who've gone into homes and they're very much into feng shui Mm -hmm. in that uh, ambient part of, I guess I don't know how you describe all of that. And they'll go to certain points of the house and you know see things and stand and feel things if it's certain sun is certain things and ways and i'm not sure that how all that works but people take that very seriously and, and you I mean, really you better too because that's a there's a lot to it i've got it, it uh, just, I don't, yeah, you the thought just popped in my head and i gotta put it out there because sometimes things that are paranormal like that could be good for business trevor are you relisting that house or are you gonna are, are they gonna stay there and, and stick it out uh they're they're still remodeling uh but yeah i, I wouldn't be surprised if they sell it when they're finished exactly yeah, well, little, i wonder i, yeah, I wonder about I, that well and some people say yeah. that when you're remodeling that stirs up uh more activity paranormal wise like so yeah, who knows if that's true or not now what about what's what's the rules for i should know this what's the rules for for disclosing this kind of stuff. You don't have to disclose that. You do, you? If nothing. somebody died in the house, you do not have to disclose that. Okay. But uh, I would say for me personally, and I'm probably for Craig or everybody in this room, that common courtesy says that you should. Mm-hmm. What about if there's suspect paranormal activity? You're not required. You're not, you're not required to, to say that. Not so in the state of Oregon. In, in the state of Oregon of that. Well, you know, it, it, it does happen, and, and people very much, uh, I don't know. I have no answers for them. Do you? I, do you? No. Have, no definitive an answer. Answers. I've got nothing on. The, I got nothing on the thing. I'm surprised you gave me an opening on that, but I'll well, politely decline. It's, 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 and that's probably <laughs> a good thing. Well, uh, what other stories you got? I mean, you, you you do a lot of stuff. You you meet a lot of different people. Both of you do I, as well. I just got one. Well, I, I remember uh, we had a house for one of the local cardiac surgeons listed. Um, beautiful home in East Medford, uh, listed at 1.4 million and. Uh, you know, he wanted us to be there for all the showings, which we absolutely agreed to. You know, totally normal request. And uh, we get a frantic call about an hour from a, sh- a showing, a scheduled showing. That's his wife who's in Portland. And he's like, Trevor, uh, I just got a call from the neighbor. Our llama is dead. And we've got the showing in an hour. <laughs> <laughs> so I'm pulling my hair out. It's like, yeah. what am I going to do? Llama's I mean, this, this too, llama's, Trevor. yeah, at least a thousand pounds. <laughs> yeah. And as luck would have it, being part of John L. Scott, the best office here in the yeah. in the valley, I put out a mass email, and someone turned me on to a lady that will actually come and pick up large animals for six hundred bucks. Really? So literally, I, I go out there, I see the llama, and tongues hanging out, and the feet are poking up in the air, and um, <laughs> That's a dead llama. Th- that <laughs> lady comes and uh, gets him loaded up with her little k- tractor uh, mm-hmm. onto the bed of the truck, and. Three minutes after she pulls out of the driveway, the buyers the wow. buyers pull in, and they turn out to buy that house. Turn it out to wow. buy that house. Wow, that's full ser- that's full service <laughs> that, there. Uh, dead that, so there is a dead. I didn't. That is I the new it. definition of how our brokers can serve our clients yeah. right there. That's above and beyond good work. I had a a, a wonderful fellow who who called. Actually, he was a listener of our show uh, and called me and said he wanted to sell his place. This is, is, couple, is just recently. And uh, it was the run-up to the marijuana world, you know. So we had like five acres. He had a mobile home on it. And I would go visit with him and, and talk about selling this thing. But he uh, he was surrounded nothing but beer cans. I mean, he's a, it's just, it's just, it's, it's, we, we became really good friends. Nothing but beer cans around him. I never went in the house. In the, in the He would never let me in the house because I, I kind of looked around the corner once when he opened the door kind of thing. And... I saw beer cans and beer cans everywhere. He would sit, he never saw him in the house, always outside, you know. And so we, we're going to go sell this place. Yes, the well works, the septic works, everything works well. You know, none of that did. And, and, and uh, there's no water in the well and, and this kind of thing. And then so we, we finally get this place sold. He got a great price for it. I mean, he was thrilled. We go to cash the check with him. I was going to take him to cash his check. He got a check for $330,000 and we couldn't cash the check. And because uh, it was an estate, you know, and he said, oh, I have all the papers. I got everything ready. So it's going to be fine. You know, well, it wasn't fine. <laughs> and so I remember him. He gives me the check. He gives me this $330,000 check. So you hold this for me. Well, I get this 
It's like two weeks it took. I'm holding this $330,000 check for this fellow. And I said, I do, this is crazy. Uh, but we finally got it resolved and he cashed that check and he was so damn happy and off he went to his new life. Where did well. you hide the check, Pete? <laughs> oh my God, I kept it in my drawer, but I was so nervous because I didn't want to keep it. You know, I didn't know what to do with it. We couldn't cash it, you know. <laughs> Here, keep this check for me, he says. And I thought, oh my goodness. Thank you Dave. Thank you for not making a reference to our old motel rooms and the beer cans, yeah. and our old the, trips. The best <laughs> of this whole thing was the, 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 the agent who bought the house there's a big. She sent me this picture of him because he never went in the house. He was always out on the porch. Uh, and he, there's a satellite picture from him on Google, and he's sitting there on the porch. You can still see him <laughs> in the him middle there. of the beer cans. In the middle That's of beer good. cans. <laughs> he was waiting for all of them to be worth ten cents each. <laughs> yep. <laughs> he made a. Oh my God, he made a fortune. My guy, he doubled his. He doubled his. Uh, he doubled his <laughs> price just uh, just a little bit. Anyway, those are just some of the things that you, that you remember because it's so varied, and it's what makes it to me anyway. In eleven years now that Joe and I have been doing this is. Is it's just fun when you meet people like that, isn't well, I, it? I mean, I, that's really I, what it's about. I, to me, it's so easy and joyful to sell property here in the Rogue Valley. Uh, you know, people come into the office and they always comment on how friendly they're it is. anxious. They're, 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 but they're coming from a, di- a big city usually, yeah. Yeah. and so I always try to explain to them that uh, Ashland or even Medford or rest of Rogue Valley, you could ask somebody the time and they'll tell you how to make a watch they're not used to people talking to them and so i had a couple come in recently to the uh, office and they said we're only in town for a day what, what would you do i said oh walk down to lithia park it's really beautiful yeah. so they go there and a few hours later they come back and they said oh we just love the park and it's, we love the town oh it's so beautiful and but we were really concerned about something i said well, what's that and they said well we are sitting at the duck pond and this guy just sat down next to us and just started talking, and we didn't know what he wanted. And I said, we probably wanted a conversation, but they're so used to being <laughs> scammed and yeah. ripped off that Well, they... that's really true. That's what makes it awful. We've got a break coming up here. We've got one more segment to go. We'll kind of update those stats again for you as well. It's amazing summer, that's for sure. A lot of activity going on, and the Real Estate Show continues right after this. And welcome back to The Real Estate Show on KCMX News Media 880. Pete and Joe, the real estate guys, with you. Next week, uh, Rogue Valley Association of Realtors will be here with our education program. So Sheriff Nate Sickler, two weeks from today, and on we go is, my goodness, uh, 2018. It's just rolling along in school. My goodness, school's starting up pretty soon, and uh, hopefully the smoke will clear out for fall because there's a lot of activity. It's already been canceled around the valley, hopefully It'll get out of here. I'd be okay if somebody started playing football in the near future here. I would kind of light my rockets a little bit. Well, we were thinking about talking about shape. We we're talking earlier about the Oregon Shakespeare Festival. I'll bet you that we, we may see a retractable roof on the outdoor uh, theater sometime just a in, big in mask, the future. Just a big mask over or the top of over it. Something over it. Yeah. Because when you think about it, boy, these fires, if this is, yeah. I, I hope it's yeah. not the new normal. But anyway, that's, that's beside the point. Today yeah. we're talking real estate uh, with Craig and with Trevor. Uh, and it just, just give me those stats again as we talked about earlier. Just, just give them to you uh, quickly here. New listings in Jackson County down 14%. July over July mm-hmm. for, down 14%. Uh, pending sales up 1%. That's kind of, you know, that's just kind of a plateauing is what we're talking about. Month supply of inventory was uh, up 4%. That's not much. Available homes per buyer was up. So the, the, the original selling price versus the list price was down from a yep, year ago. And what concerns me more than all of it, and, and, I, and I know our listeners and watch this, is that the affordability indexes, which give you the, 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 how affordable it is to live here based on the median income, et cetera, et cetera, down 10% uh, in Jackson County uh, from a year ago. So it's less affordable. We have less choice. Rise, in, interest rates are, are you know, creeping up a little bit. And yet, fellas, this market is really booming right now. It's really a lot of activity. Wow. That's remarkable as we go. Okay. Yeah. yeah. Well, there's. I think that there's a, a little bit of buyer pushback yes. uh, on pricing, yeah. and and I think uh, there's been quite a few price reductions uh, yeah. in the market. We're uh, on the MLS. It, we're averaging like 65 price reductions a day. Yeah. There's a lot of price reductions, and, and I think right. that's just from buyer pushback. I think that there's a little more inventory on the market. People can be choosier and. Uh, and sellers, what is your advice to sellers, boys, right now? Because price sellers, it right price the right. first time. Yep. If you're on there 30 days and you haven't sold it or whatever, but you've got to price it right because 
it's not going to sell if it's not priced right. And I, th I think the, the sellers are really being reasonable. I've had my last two listings. They actually came to me before I came to them. With the price reduction? Yes, and I was going to do it after two weeks uh -huh. after listing it if we didn't have an offer. And they both of them came to me. So I think sellers are paying attention to the market, and they're going to price those homes correctly. Yeah, well, in Jackson County, and you're talking about our market snapshot in terms of months of supply, months supply of inventory, and we always hear a six-month supply is balance for buyer and seller, right? Six months right. buyer for seller. In Jackson County, zero to $150,000 prices, which isn't very many out there anyway, there's less than two months supply. 150 to 250, Trevor, it's a one, one month supply. Then it goes to two month supply. The luxury market is a 22 month supply. So it really varies by, by category and price category. Are you still seeing, fellas, uh, multiple offers on the lower levels, or is that, is that leveled off? I, I, I've seen multiple offers now in Klamath County. I don't know why uh, lately, because the market is, is affordable there and you're seeing activity there. What about here? I, well, I had a, uh, a listing in Ashland that was affordable, had three offers before noon. So I put it on the market at nine really? o'clock. Three offers, and then one in Medford. What was that price? What was that price range? That was under three hundred thousand. Okay, that's exactly in Ashland. In, in Ashland, in Ashland oh, which is like there you, have it. you know, that's indoor exactly, plumbing in Ashland. That's exactly what yeah. this says. Okay, right. and and the same in um, my other listing. It's just in Medford. So they're they're getting offers if they're priced right, but they have to be more at the lower level. Yeah, uh, we have a client looking in the two sixty five and less. Uh, sweet lady, first time home buyer. Um, and uh, we did put in an offer on a house, um, Central Point area. It was on like a half acre. It's priced at two fifty, oh, and wow. it was a multiple offer situation, and uh, we missed that one. And why did you? I mean, what, what, tell when you get into multiple offers again. Tell our viewers what what, what to expect when you get to that situation. You got to be ready for it. Well, I think one strategy that we've used, um, obviously, it didn't work this time, is when you get that prequal letter. Um, and the purchase price is 250 and you're going to offer 250 get the prequal letter for what you're qualified for let let them know without actually writing it in the offer that you can go higher oh okay that's yeah. a good that's a good point and oftentimes they write it to that lower price point that you're right to the purchase now. price yeah right. and so but perhaps the banks thinks that's mm -hmm. all the higher that you can go well that that's a that, that, that i shouldn't be telling you guys my secrets it's, it's okay <laughs> so you, you just told everybody what well, was interesting that, that you yeah. said that investors are still out in the market uh, looking for rental properties. Well, rents rents are going up steadily, um, and there's there's a demand for for rental properties for, by investors. Of course, yeah, yeah. It's it's uh, it, it doesn't change. In fact, Danielle Remley's going to be here in a couple weeks uh, as well and do a show on the rental market. Again, what, what's so crazy about this in the rental market is that in Jackson County stats, thirty seven percent of the median income is going to rents. That is. 12% above the state average here. Rent, rents is really a big issue. And well, I, I think the issue it's, it's, is it's, that the, the incomes aren't raising. I mean, that's, that's the flip side of that coin. Well, we, got a, we, have, we have record. I mean, unemploy, unemployment here is low. I mean, we're, we're seeing that our economy right now is probably some of the best I've ever seen here in 30 years. Uh, don't, don't you think? Well, I mean, I, I, the economy I, here is doing really well. Now, smoke, forget all that. I, I understand. But. I'm just thinking when my parents got married in 1948, it said 18% of a man's income. They didn't even consider the woman yeah. working a uh, win for a, a rent. 18%, now, okay. And, and by the time I was uh, getting my first place, it was 40, uh, 49%. So almost Jeez. half the income was going wow. for for that well, 30, in California. Yeah, yeah. Well, it's still 37 in rent. There's a lot of renters out there and a lot of demand, and we're seeing that. So that's good to hear, though, that investors are out there buying and, and still doing. Uh, yeah, a lot. Be, let's face it. If you want to do something, build a duplex, you know, build a, build a triplex, you know, do something like that, and you're really going to have a, an impact on, on the market here around. Okay, so we got just a couple of minutes left. Uh, Trevor, we'll give you guys the last words here today. What else you got, to, got well, going? Well, uh, we've got our... In Southwest Medford, our little subdivision, 19 lot subdivision, Anju View, been working on this for a while. Right. Uh, this, uh, developer's given us permission to say that he's motivated. He's found another project he wants to move on to. So, uh, how, many, those, how many do you have left? Uh, we've got five listed, and I think after those five that we have listed, there's two more. 
So you're all, you're doing you're doing pretty yeah. well with that. We, actually, yeah, we, we are. We started that. I remember right. that. And they're they're priced from three twenty five to three thirty five. The ones that we have listed currently. So uh, if anybody's uh, looking for new construction in Southwest Medford, you need some help with closing costs to make it as little out of pocket uh, coming down. Uh, Come see us on your yeah. view. Three thirty-five. That, that those are good prices for uh, for new. Still motivator. time. Yeah. Still really time to is. pick your finishes. Yeah. Okay, yeah. Craig. What about you? I'm going to end with a story of the Wizard of Oz. You got to hurry. You okay, do it real pretty, fast. Pretty fast. <laughs> so real quick, Buddy Ebsen was going to actually play the role of the Scarecrow, and he traded places, and uh, then he got aluminum. Uh, got sick from the aluminum, and I learned that from when I was canvassing an actress who was in a play with him in London. Told me that story of how he was actually going to be the Scarecrow. Then he switched, was going to become the Tin Man, but then he got allergic to the, the paint or the makeup they put on, and he got ill, and they had to replace Buddy it. Buddy would have been an awesome no. scarecrow. Oh. He would have <laughs> killed it. <laughs> you can catch any of these guys. You can look them up, uh, uh, Google them. Uh, Trevor Boucher and Craig Blazinski as well. Thanks, fellas. Uh, we'll, we'll catch up again as the fall comes around and see how this crazy market is doing and, and what's going on there, okay? So thanks for being here. I appreciate that thanks, very, Pete. very much. That'll do it for the Real Estate Show here today. Thanks for joining us. We'll be back with you next week. Don't forget, check out any of our past shows at realestateshoworegon.com. For Pete and Joe, have a great week, everybody. God bless you all. We'll see you next Saturday right back here on The Real Estate Show.